Hello and welcome to this Excel lesson specifically for accounting and finance. In this video, we're going to create an amortization schedule from scratch, and we're going to teach you many different quick tricks and important formulas, such as the VLOOKUP, auto sum, and present value formulas. So with that, let's jump in. One of the best examples to show you many different accounting tricks in Excel is by creating a loan amortization schedule from scratch. So just with this basic information, we can create a full loan amortization schedule that looks like this. So let's get started. We have a $100,000 loan, that's the principal. We have a 10-year loan paid in monthly payments, so 120 payments, 5% annual rate, and the payment is given as this amount. So we start here January 1st, 2024 and we have the balance and the payment. But part of this payment is for interest and part of it is for principal. So how much of it is for interest? Now we're assuming the payment is at the end of the year. Now this is the annual rate, but we need the monthly rate. Therefore, we're going to divide this 5% annual rate by 12%. So we're going to divide this by 12 and we're going to multiply it by the beginning balance. Now what's important here is create this cell into a fixed cell by pressing F4. Now this fixes the cell so that when we copy and paste this formula, it's going to keep the reference to the rate here. So now we know this much is interest, therefore the difference between these two is the principal payment. Therefore, the ending balance is 100,000 minus the principal payment. So then the next year, your beginning balance is last year's ending balance. The payment is the same amount for every month. And the interest is going to be this formula for every month. And this principal is going to be the same formula as well. So we're going to have the same formulas that we drag down to repeat them 120 times. So let's first create the numbers to 120. So first we need to create three numbers in a row so that it understands the pattern. Then click in the bottom right corner where it turns black and then click and drag down until we have 120. Now we can do the same thing with the dates where we just enter in 2, 1, 24, 3, 1, 24, and then it will repeat the entire process. Okay, so we could just copy and paste this amount, or we could click in the bottom right corner and drag the amount. So we could just click on this, and since it's the same amount every time, we drag it down to the bottom. And then for the interest, we're just gonna drag that formula, same for all three of these. So we can click here, hold shift, and click here, and then we can drag the entire formulas all the way down to the bottom. So now we have created the entire loan amortization schedule. Now we can go into formula view, which on a Mac would be command function accent mark. And we can see all of the formulas that we have input here. Now let's say that you want to sum up all of these items quickly. There's an auto sum feature. On a Mac, it is Command-Shift-T, and it adds all of the items above. So then we could just drag this same formula over, and then we've added up all three of these items. So now that we've added up these different items, we want to see what they pertain to. So what we want to do is freeze paints. So we want to click on the row below where we want to freeze because we want this row number nine to freeze so we can see all the titles. Then in the view tab, we click on freeze panes. And now when we scroll down, it is going to stay fixed. So we can see these totals are for payment, interest, and principal, which makes sense because we are paying down our principal of 100,000 and we paid 27,000 of interest, so the total payment's 127,000. Now keep in mind the ending balance is not exactly zero because of rounding errors. So now let's say you actually want to calculate how to find this payment amount. 
we can use the present value formulas within Excel. So we're going to solve for the payment equals PMT. And the first thing it wants is the rate. Now be careful not to enter the annual rate because these are monthly payments. So we need to divide this by 12 to have the monthly interest rate. So now we go back to the formula. We have the monthly interest rate. The number of periods is 120. And then the present value is the amount that you initially borrow. The future value is $0 because you're paying it off to $0 by the very end. And the type is whether you're paying off the payments at the beginning or the end of each period. So here it's going to be the end of each period. And so you can see the payment amount of 1060 So now that we've gone through this full amortization schedule, let's move on to a few more important formulas, such as the VLOOKUP, sum if and concatenate formulas. Now let's talk about the VLOOKUP tool. This is very useful if you're trying to extract information from one table, but you don't know a quick way of how to find it. So let's say we have this one table of account numbers and the description of that account. And in another, we have the managers for each account number. Now we want to use a VLOOKUP so that it will identify the account number from this other table and then extract the name of the manager. This may seem simple with five items, but it's better to understand it in a simple way. And then you might use it in an example with an item that has hundreds of rows. So we enter V lookup. The first is which item is it going to be using to identify? So we wanted to use the account number to identify the other table. Next, we're going to identify the other table. So now we have to go to the other tab that has this table here, and we're going to click and drag to include both columns here. Then we're going to hit comma. Now we're going to tell it which column we want the information to be extracted. Do we want it to extract the numbers in column one or the managers in column two? We want column two. So now it identifies that 101 is John Doe, and so it brings in John Doe here. So then we can copy and paste this VLOOKUP, and it brings in all of the managers. Another useful Excel formula is the SUM IF formula. Let's say that we have a long list of different account sales, and we just want to know the amounts that come from the sales account. So we can enter SUM IF. Then we enter the range we're going to be identifying for the criteria. We want everything that says sales. Then we're going to sum this column. So we're saying from any item in this column that says sales, sum those items together. So then we have 80,000, which are these three items. And while we're looking at this table, I want you to look at the bottom of Excel. It's going to show you the sum of 232,000 and the count of 10. So this is always useful for finding a quick sum or for finding the number of items that you are dealing with. So next we have the concatenate formula. This is useful when you have individual pieces of information in different columns that you want to combine into one cell. So you enter concat, then you choose the first piece of information, comma. We need a space between the names, so we're going to quote, space, quote, comma, and then the last name. So now we have the first and last name in one cell. So then we can simply click and drag this formula to combine all of the names. One of the best ways to avoid rounding issues in Excel is by using the round formula. So let's say we want to round the payment to the nearest dollar. So you enter round, you then choose the number you want to round, and you're going to choose the number of decimal places. So let's put zero, so then it rounds it to the nearest dollar. And then if we put one decimal place, then it rounds it to the nearest tenth place. So this is the round formula.
So I hope that you feel a bit more confident in Excel after having watched this video. If you have any Excel questions or topics you'd like me to cover, feel free to write them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching.